My name is Grace Dodier. I teach writing and analysis to first year law students at Northwestern Law School in Chicago. Um, but my role here at the MBL is primarily as the spouse of a, an MBL scientist, someone who's on the faculty at the University of Chicago in the Biological Sciences Division. I had heard about the MBL many years before we first came when my husband and I were just dating and that would have been around 1983. I thought that it was really fun. I mean, I was I had just graduated from college when I met Bill and I was living in New York City and it was a great way to get away from the heat of New York City in the summertime. And we came probably for about three or four days. And it just seemed like sort of a, a fun and interesting place to be. My husband, Bill, and I uh, came to visit one of his friends who was a scientist here. And we stayed in one of the cabins. And I think it was on Memorial Circle, maybe on Devil's Lane. I just don't remember. But I remember staying in the cabin, and um, it was very, very rustic. And I think that she was in the cabin with a number of other people, other scientists who were probably graduate students. And so uh, Bill and I, who were just dating at the time, were sleeping on the floor in the living room of one of the cabins. But it was super fun. Uh, we went out, and we bought uh, lobsters, and I had never cooked a live lobster before and it was a little traumatizing because you put this live thing into a big pot of boiling water and you basically boil it until it's dead and then you eat it, which is delicious. We've been coming to the MBL since 2002 and uh, we were first living in Devil's Lane, number 13 Devil's Lane. Um, which is kind of a fun place to live. It had been recently renovated. The cabin was really lovely. And we brought our three children with us and our dog, Coco. And our three children are Willa, Charlotte, and Nathaniel Green, who were at the time eight years old. I became part of the MBL community as soon as we came here because we moved into the cabins and you know, from the moment you get into the cabins and into the either Devil's Lane or Memorial Circle, you just are in this little community of other science families, some of whom who have children um, who are your children's age or maybe a little older, some a little bit younger. And you're there and you're in it together. So uh, you can compare notes on who has uh, the more comfortable sofa or the soggier cabin or who has a great cure for uh, poison ivy or how to prevent the mosquitoes from attacking everyone ferociously. Um, or when is the best time to use the laundry because it tends to get a little crowded over there and it's a little dog-eat-dog. We participated in the uh, annual uh, fundraising efforts by the Woods Hole Public Library. There's always a children's fair there every summer at the beginning of July, around the time of the Woods Hole Parade, which is probably the nerdiest Fourth of July parade, parade you would ever want to see. Um, but we always participated in that. Um, and I think one of my favorite things that we did for the Woods Hole Public Library fundraiser was to make um, a big uh, ship, a front of a ship. I went downtown in Falmouth and got huge cardboard boxes that I then chopped up and created the bow of a ship that I put on the front of the public library, painted it so that it looked like a huge ship with a point, and then made the figurehead um, using paper mache, creating a head with my children, um, creating the head of a mermaid. And then we found an old wig at a thrift store and some scarves and things, and we made her very voluptuous and, and stuck her on top of the ship's, I guess it's the 
bow, the prow, the whatever it is at the front, and she was a beautiful mermaid that stood at the front of that ship. There was a time when our children went fishing. Um, our children never had gone fishing before. I went to a local bait and tackle, whatever, fisherman's store, and I bought a fishing pole, and I bought, I didn't even know how to use a fishing pole, but we just decided we wanted to go fishing. So they were probably about 10 or 11 at the time. And I asked the man at the fishing supply store that was over off of Route 28 what I needed, and he gave me an inexpensive pole. And I think that we didn't get any bait there. We ended up asking Harish, who's a scientist here. He's at the MBL, um, but he's also at the NIH, I think, with Josh Zimmerberg and others. And Harish is famous in our family because he works with squid all day. But in the evening, if there's leftover squid after the experiments, he will bring that home and cook it. And he's a wonderful chef. He makes curried squid. But in any event, before the squid was curried, Harish gave the children some of the chopped up squid. They went over off of one of the docks here in downtown um, um, Woods Hole and I wasn't with them, but they just went there and they threw the squid and the hook into the water and eventually they came home with, uh, I think it's called a grouper. It had its eyes on one side of its body and it was a pretty substantial fish about the size of a dinner plate. But they were really excited about it and we were having people over that night. One of them was um, Josh Rosenthal who has been until recently with his wife Loretta down in Puerto Rico, but I think they're coming here to the MBL more permanently. But Josh is a wonderful fisherman, and he took a look at that fish, and he said, I know how to fillet that fish. And so we had nothing but really dull knives, but Josh was able to take one of the dull knives and take all the bones out of that, that fish with two eyes on one side, and then we cooked it, and everyone ate it and agreed that it was the best fish they had ever eaten. Uh, when we started coming here, we were the young family, uh, one of the younger families. And now Bill and I are one of the older couples with grown children. So our relationship with the MBL, at least um, the MBL as it relates to families and children, has changed over time. What I see with my husband is that he's extremely happy here and that that allows him a certain freedom of thought. The most valuable connections I've made here at the MBL have been really just with other families and other parents of, of children of scientists. I think that it's very easy when you are outside of the MBL, if you're not part of this community and outside of Woods Hole, to get sort of focused on your work, your life, the four corners of the day to day. However, here at the MBL, I'm able to reach outside of myself, make friends who I never would have made, make friends with people who I never would have met had I not been here at the MBL. We also had a lot of parties at our, and we still continue to have, even though our children are now grown, a lot of parties at our cabin, which uh, means that, you know, it's sort of spontaneous or sometimes planned. People come over and have dinner and people talk about their lives, but also it's an opportunity for scientists to talk to each other about their science. So. Uh, there's a, a chance to, to build those kinds of connections with people who are, again, from all over the world, such that we've created friendships with people who we now have visited in Germany and in, um, and in Paris, um, and, and people who have come to visit us in Chicago, who are both from the United States and elsewhere, who we've met here, or who Bill has developed a, a scientific relationship, a collaboration with um, over over the years. I think that I've become very good friends with, say, Teresa, 
um, Teresa Jones, uh, who's married to Josh Zimmerberg. And we've certainly watched their three boys grow up and go through all of their, their exciting um, growing pains and this, the ups and the downs that my children have gone through here um, also. So I, I think that Teresa is a, a great friend of mine now. And Joanne, who's married to Steve Smith, she's also a scientist, as Teresa is. And she comes now, instead of from California, she comes with her husband from time to time from Seattle and works with Tom Reese. I think that we can all say in my family that we're really good friends with Larry Cohen. We all really enjoy Larry and his, um, his entertaining stories and his generosity with my children, um, with our children, uh, and his, his really sincere interest in what they do and what they've always done when they were even very small children, always asking them what they were doing in school, what they were doing at the MBL, um, were they having a good time, and having them work in the kitchen to get dinner ready and to uh, help him clean up after dinner. I think that, that this place is so unusual in its ability to um, provide the necessary workspace for scientists, but not only allow them to be scientists, but also to be humans and to interact and collaborate and discuss science on a very personal level. That you, you can have a scientific debate with somebody, but it's a little bit easier to understand their perspective about science or about anything when you're doing so over uh, you know, something that you've cooked outside and you're enjoying a campfire. And maybe even we know um, some family, families who sing around the campfire um, here in Woods Hall. I think it's probably the fact that it's a community of scientists who are fully engaged in their scientific research but who also are fully engaged in their lives as human beings, who enjoy each other's company and recognize that those positive personal relationships can translate into very positive professional accomplishments and achievements.